Why do we forget so much of what we learned, sometimes within days? Researchers studying memory have found powerful ways to stop that forgetting, and these ten discoveries might completely change how you learn. Most students highlight, reread, and cram, but then forget everything on test day. Here's what actually works according to science. In this journal article, researchers reviewed hundreds of studies to figure out which study techniques really improve long-term memory. The two most powerful techniques: retrieval practice. Instead of just looking at notes, test yourself. Use flashcards, practice quizzes, or write out answers from memory. The effort of recalling makes the memory stronger. Spacing. Instead of cramming for hours, break study into shorter sessions spread across days. Forgetting a little between sessions actually helps lock the information in when you relearn it. Many students actually prefer the least effective strategies because they feel easier in the moment, but easy isn't the same as effective. So next time you study, ditch the highlighter, test yourself, space it out, and mix it up. That's how to make learning stick. The secret to learning isn't reading more; it's testing yourself more. In 2006, psychologists Rodiger and Karpicki tested this idea. They split students into two groups. One group reread material over and over. The other group practiced retrieval. They closed the book and recalled as much as they could from memory, almost like a self-quiz. The results were dramatic. Right after studying, both groups did about the same. But a week later, the retrieval practice group crushed it. They remembered far more of what they studied. Why is that? Because memory works like a muscle, the effort of pulling information out of your brain strengthens it. The harder the recall, the stronger the learning. So what can you do? Don't just read your notes; close them. Quiz yourself with flashcards, practice tests, or even a blank sheet where you write down everything you remember. The real trick isn't studying to pass the test; it's using tests themselves to study well. Want to study less but remember more? The secret is all about timing. We've all done it, cramming the night before an exam. It feels intense. It feels productive, but research shows it's one of the least effective ways to learn. Psychologist Sapita and his colleagues studied how memory works over days, weeks, and even months. They're finding the spacing effect. Instead of one long cram session, breaking learning into shorter sessions across time makes your memory far stronger. When you revisit material after a gap. Your brain has to work harder to recall it. That effort is what strengthens memory. In some cases, students who spaced their learning performed twice as well on later tests compared to those who crammed. The best part: spacing pairs perfectly with retrieval practice. So quiz yourself today, then again tomorrow, and again a few days later. Each recall makes the memory traces stronger and harder to forget. So don't leave studying to the last minute. Break it up. Review regularly. And give your brain the workout it needs. Want to supercharge your studying? Stop practicing the same thing over and over. Most students study in blocks: all fractions first, then decimals, then geometry. That's called blocked practice. It feels easy, but research shows that it doesn't stick. The better method is called interleaving. Instead of doing one type of problem in a row, shuffle them together. So in math. You can do fractions, word problems, geometry, all in the same study session. Here's why it works: with block practice, you don't really have to think; you just repeat the same formula. But with interleaving, your brain has to pause and decide: what kind of problem is this? What strategy should I use? That extra effort strengthens memory and builds flexible problem-solving skills. So how do you use it? In math, shovel different problems instead of batching them. In language learning, mix vocabulary, grammar, and reading all in one session. In sports or music, rotate drills instead of repeating the same move endlessly. The rule is simple: don't just repeat, mix it up. It may feel harder, but that's exactly why interleaving makes learning last. Want to double your memory? Don't just read words; add pictures. Psychologists call this dual coding. Our brains take in information through two main channels: words and images. When you only study with text, you're relying on one pathway. But when you combine words with visuals like diagrams, sketches, or charts, you activate both pathways. 
That means if you forget one, the other can cue your memory. Research shows that students who used dual coding remembered more, understood concepts faster, and performed better on later tests. Even simple drawings like stick figures or arrows are enough. The visuals don't have to be beautiful to be effective. So how can you use it? When taking notes, turn key ideas into quick sketches or mind maps. In history, build timelines with both dates and images. In science, draw diagrams of processes instead of just memorizing text. Think about it, most of us forget lines from textbooks, but we easily remember visuals like a movie scene or the cover of a favorite childhood book. That's the sticky power of images. Want to understand something more deeply? Start asking one simple word, why? Most of us study by memorizing facts or definitions, but research shows that simply asking why and explaining it in your own words dramatically improves understanding and memory. Here's why it works. When you explain something is true, your brain has to connect it to prior knowledge. Instead of just storing information, you're organizing it, making it easier to recall later. So how to use this strategy? While reading, pause and explain each section in your own words. Or, when studying definitions, ask yourself, why is this the case? Instead of just, what does it mean? If you're reviewing notes, try teaching the concept to someone else. It forces you to clarify the why behind it. Studies show that students who practice self-explaining by asking why remember more and transfer their knowledge to new problems more effectively. Don't just learn the what, ask why, and you'll remember longer, understand deeper, and think sharper. Struggling to focus when you study? The problem might be the noise around you. A lot of students think they can read or study with music, TV, or talking in the background. It feels fine in the moment, but research shows that background noise actually reduces how much you understand and remember. Here's why. When you're reading, your brain is already working hard to process words and build meaning. Add background lyrics, conversation, or even the buzz of a TV, and your brain has to split attention. Studies comparing students who read in silence versus those with background noise found a clear difference. Those in quiet environments had better comprehension and recalled more detailed later. So what can you do? When reading dense material, choose silence or a quiet space. If total silence feels uncomfortable, try neutral background noise, like white noise or soft instrumental music without lyrics. And if you must study in a noisy environment, chunk your time, 10 to 15 minutes of focused, quiet reading, then take a break. Your brain remembers best when it doesn't have to fight distractions. Silence isn't boring, it's a study superpower. Want to learn something twice as well? Try teaching it. Most students think the best way to learn is just to study harder, more reading, more highlighting, more notes. But research shows there's a better method, teaching others. Here's why it works. When you prepare to teach, your brain processes the material more deeply. You have to organize the information, figure out the main points, and put it into your own words. That effort builds stronger memory connections than passive review. So how can you use it? After studying, explain the concept out loud as if you're teaching a class. Record a short lesson on your phone and play it back. Or find a study buddy and swap roles, so each person teaches the other. The act of explaining forces you to notice gaps in your understanding and fill it. Don't just study for yourself. Teach someone else or even an imaginary student. Teaching is learning, doubled. Did you know you forget most of what you learn within just a few days? Over a century ago, psychologist Hermann Ebbinghaus discovered something shocking. After studying new material, people forget almost half of it within a single day. A week later, most of it is gone. This drop-off is called the forgetting curve. Here's why. Our brains are efficient. If information doesn't seem important, the brain clears it out to make space for what matters. That's why cramming the night before feels like it works, but the knowledge fades fast. Here's the good news. You can fight the forgetting curve. The key is reviewing information at spaced intervals. Each time you revisit material, your brain strengthens the memory traces and resets the forgetting curve. Instead of dropping off, the curve flattens. 
and you remember for weeks, months, even years. Forgetting is natural, but it's not final. You can beat the curve by reviewing often, and you'll remember far more for far longer. Want to perform your best under pressure? Train with tests, not notes. We've all been there, sitting in an exam, feeling prepared, and then suddenly your mind goes blank. That's stress at work. When cortisone floods your brain, it disrupts the hippocampus, the part responsible for memory. But here's the good news: retrieval practice can protect against this. Instead of just rereading your notes, quiz yourself. Use flashcards, practice tests, or write everything you remember on a blank page. Why does this work? Every time you practice recalling, you build multiple pathways to the same memory. So when stress blocks one route, your brain can still find another way back. Research shows that students who rely on retrieval practice not only learn faster, but also remember more during high-pressure exams compared to those who only review notes. And here's a bonus: frequent testing naturally encourages spacing, spreading out your study sessions. Together, retrieval and spacing create one of the most powerful memory-boosting combinations we know. Here's the takeaway: don't just study to pass the test; use tests themselves as your study tool. Retrieval practice doesn't just prepare you for the material; it prepares you for the pressure. The key is this: don't just study harder, study smarter. These strategies have been tested across decades of research, and they work because they align with how the brain actually works. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and share it with someone who's studying right now. And let me know in the comments which of these strategies will you try first. See you next time.